can turn the world on with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can have the time, why don't you take it Is it more uncomfortable than standing? I don't know. I'm trying to decide. <laughs> Why don't you try the bed? Oh, no, I don't want to sit on that spread. It might shed all over my suit. <laughs> Here's a nice bean bag. Why don't you try that? <laughs> Mrs. Morgan Mary! <laughs> oh, don't get up. Uh, don't worry, I can't. <laughs> before it swallows you. Oh, 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 it's so oh. nice to see you. My, don't you look pretty? Oh, it's probably the new shoes. <laughs> don't you look wonderful? Oh. But then, why shouldn't you? Oh, come on. <laughs> and now, Mary, our special guest star, my father, Mr. Morgan Stern. Yeah. Oh, I feel I know you. <laughs> well, I'm glad, otherwise I'd never let you take advantage of me like that. <laughs> Lou, how was the trip? Did you have a pleasant flight? Yeah, we had a pleasant flight, except for some life of the party guy who kept playing chopsticks on the lounge piano. Oh, gee, I hate that. It was me. <laughs> oh. oh, everybody loves Martin's sense of humor. <laughs> Martin, don't you think you ought to go find us a place to stay? Yeah. Hey, wait, I thought you wanted to stay here. Rhoda. When you told us you had an apartment, I don't know why, but I pictured an apartment. <laughs> Look, maybe there's a nice motel around here someplace. Gee, Pop, I don't know of any. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, Mr. Morgenstern, mm -hmm. there is a very nice one on the corner of Oakhurst and Burnside. My parents stayed there once. Good, I'll see if there are any vacancies, and later I'll come back for the luggage. And for me. And for you. <laughs> Rhoda, you know something? In New York City, you'd have to keep these beads locked up at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rhoda, your father is j Well, I mean, I never pictured Cary Grant. <laughs> He's just, he's even more attractive than I was sure he would be. Yes, he is, isn't he? Oh, Mrs. Morgenstern, I think your husband is just terrific. I know. Hey, I just thought of something. Wouldn't it look kind of funny to drive up to a motel without a car? <laughs> Rhoda, honey, could I borrow yours? Well, it's in the body shop. I sort of keep it in there and just take it out for accidents. <laughs> Mrs., Mr. Morgenstern, you can borrow my car if you want. Oh, Mary, that's no, all right. Please, no. please, I don't even need it. Well, golly, that's terrific. Ida, did you hear that? Now we won't have to rent one for the whole week we're here. Gotcha! Oh. Now we see where you got your gotchas. Right. I'll get you the keys. <laughs> so long, <fun. laughs> uh, Rhoda. Yeah, Ma? I have to tell you, 
Your father and I coming to Minneapolis, it isn't just a pleasure trip. You're telling me. <laughs> hey, Ma, you're not going to move here. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Rhoda, you may have noticed in the past 10 or 20 years that your father and I aren't getting any younger. I mean, some people have told me that I have matured uh, gracefully. But your father... I, your father... I mean, nobody tells me I look like Cary Grant. <laughs> Ma, what is it you're trying to say? Huh? Well, uh, Rhoda, our marriage is on the rocks. You're talking ridiculous. I don't believe that. If your marriage is on the rocks, how come you and Papa are in here acting like nothing is wrong? He doesn't know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How could he not know? Rhoda, I've been keeping something from you. It's very difficult to tell you this, Rhoda, but there's another party. Another party? You don't mean you and know him and... And he doesn't know? He doesn't know I know. Oh, I refuse. I refuse to talk about this. Would I make something like this up? Yes, you would. And I'm not going to discuss it any further. That's all. It's too dumb, Mark. Don't come in here and tell me that my father is fooling around. Who's fooling around? He's dead serious. <laughs> Believe me, Rhoda, a woman knows the signs. The signs? Ah, oh, come on, Ma. What signs? Like taking me out to dinner and bringing home flowers. Ma, listen, I, I want you to stop this talk. I'm telling you, I don't want to talk any more about it. Rhoda, you've got this all wrong. It's not his fault. When people spark to your father... Especially women. Well, even Mary did it. I mean, what kind of proof have you got? For 33 years, that nice Mrs. Edelman that worked with your father? Yeah. Well, now all of a sudden, a nice old lady is not what he wants for a secretary. Now he has a 24-year-old girl with blue eyes. What happened to Mrs. Edelman? She died. <laughs> Mom, listen to me. I don't want to discuss this any further. All right, don't. Don't believe me. No. Don't lift a finger to help. No, I won't. And after the divorce, don't feel guilty. Oh. <laughs> Mary, I'm checking the billing. No calls, no interruptions. Right, Mr. Grant. I thought the billing came on the first of the month. His bar bills come on the 15th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Newsroom. Well, it's got to be there. I'll come help you look. Mary, the film for our feature story is missing. What story? The one on inefficiency in business. <laughs> Hiya, Mayor. Hi. 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 How are you? Stopped. I made lunch reservations in two restaurants. <laughs> well, welcome to the WJM newsroom. Golly, why isn't anything the way you picture it? You know what I expected here? 30 or 40 reporters, a dozen copy boys, Spencer Tracy is the fighting editor. Oh, well, <laughs> that's because everybody's at lunch. Except us. So that way I can show you around without disturbing anyone. I mean, that is if you're interested. Interested? Oh, we love studio tours, don't we, Mark? Oh, look, that one in Hollywood, that was really something. Oh, yeah, first you get on this little tram and it takes you around to the dressing rooms of the stars and then the stars come out and say hello to you. <laughs> That's right. And the show they put on, I'm telling you, these stuntmen are falling out of trees, out of buildings. All of a sudden, you're on a boat and there's a torpedo coming right at you. And suddenly, there's a big explosion. I'm telling you, you'd swear it was the real thing. It is the most fantastic thing I have ever seen. Now, Mary, give us your tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, this, this is, is the, the newsroom. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting here. Uh -huh. That's, uh... Oh, somebody draws over here? Right, right, yes, he does. And uh, these are his colors. His, uh, his colored carousel. My, did you ever see so many colors, Mark? Mary, uh, excuse me, could you help us look? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll be just a second. I have to find some film. I was here once before, you know, so I could sort of uh, pick up where Mary left off. This is, uh, this is Mary's desk. And this is Mary's typewriter. Is this Mary's chair? <laughs> and this is Mary's boss's office door, Lou Grant. And this is him. <laughs> well, Mr. Grant, hello. I didn't 
think we'd catch you here. I thought you'd be out to lunch, but it's nice to see you're here. We were just looking over your little newsroom. Ah, you remember me, don't you? Ida Morgan Stern. I met you the last time I was here. Was it the time before? Anyway, here I am again, only this time I came with my husband, Martin. Hiya there. We came all the way from New York. Well, I see you have a lot to keep you busy, so I'll just let you get back to work. It's been nice chatting with you, Mr. Grant. Bye-bye. Oh, that Mr. Grant is such a nice man. You know, you're right. He looks like Spencer Tracy. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Mrs. Morgenstern. I have to answer the buzzer. I'll be right in, Mr. Grant. <laughs> Isn't that Mary efficient? She heard that before it even buzzed. Mary, a person just opened this door and spoke small talk to me at some length. That was Mrs. Morgenstern, Rhoda's mother. Uh, you might have remembered meeting her. I might have remembered, but I didn't. I thought maybe she was somebody important. But now she turns out to be your friend's mother. I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. It won't happen again. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, Rhoda, I'll be, I'll be out in just a minute. Uh, no, I gotta do this, ma'am. Uh, is she in trouble because of what just happened? Uh, Rhoda, really, everything is okay. I am not in trouble. I disagree. <laughs> now listen, Lou. It was my mother. So if you're gonna yell at someone, yell at me. Okay. <laughs> Rhoda, this is a newsroom. I have work all over my desk. I can't have people barging in here and interrupting me. And I do not enjoy being one of the high points of interest on the guided tour for visiting parents. Do I make myself clear? I uh, can't believe you took me up on that offer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you have anything left for me? No, that did it. Mary, I am sorry. I do crazy things when I'm hungry. It's okay. Listen, we can go to lunch now. Oh, good. Uh, where is your mother? Oh, I don't know. She must have wandered off somewhere. Mary, we found the film. Oh, great. Where'd you find it? I didn't. Your mother did. It's just a matter of knowing where to look. <laughs> well, we, we can go to lunch now, Mrs. Morgan. Oh, where's Martin? He went to the men's room. <laughs> and you just never know who you're gonna meet there, do you? Mary? Yeah, come on in, Rhoda. Hello. Hi. Oh, uh, listen, turn the music down if you want to. Oh, do you mind if I turn it off? No. Yeah, to me, music and conversation don't mix. I keep trying to talk on key. Do <laughs> you have any juice? Yeah, sure, in the fridge. Help yourself. How was the evening with your parents? Oh, we watched TV. There were certain TV programs that my mother simply will not miss. I know. My mother's the same way. Hey, you want some juice? No, thanks. See, my father had planned to take us to this nice French restaurant, but we never would have made it back in time. So we stayed at the motel and had chicken in the bucket with Chad Everett. <laughs> Who is it? It's only me, Ida. What's she doing here? Ma! Ma! What are you doing? <laughs> it's over, Rhoda. I left your father. The marriage is finished. But it's all right. <laughs> This, huh, Mary? No. Well, don't look so surprised. It's been coming. Rhoda knows all about it. Uh, well, look, this is obviously a, a very family kind of thing. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I got some laundry to do. I mean, I know you don't need an audience. No, it's okay, Mary. I don't mind an audience. Mary, she loves an audience. <laughs> so come and sit down. I'll tell you everything. <sighs> <laughs> Ma, you're not telling us anything. What happened? We had a big fight. Does Pop know about it? <laughs> he knows. Listen, Mary. 
sorry. Before you judge Martin too harshly, I want you to hear my side of the story. Yeah, well, uh, Mrs. Morgenstern, I just want to say, you know, that I like both you and Mr. Morgenstern, and uh, and I'm sure this whole thing is going to, you know, straighten itself out. But, I, you know, I really feel that it would be wrong of me to make a comment uh, one way or the other at, at this time. Can I go on now? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. sure. Well, I told him that I understood about him and his sordid affairs. His, his affairs? Ma, please. Mary does not have the time to listen to all this. Yeah, I really do have some laundry that I gotta take well, care of. Well, I can of. say this fast. Mary, I'm a modern woman who knows the score, and I know that the male animal has certain needs that a loving and devoted wife of 35 years cannot satisfy. <laughs> you said all this to him? Yeah, but not so fast. <laughs> Ma, please, just go back to the motel to pop, right now. No, Rhoda, a marriage cannot survive without honesty. There's only one thing that will get me to go back to your father. And what's that, Ma? If he'll admit he doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> This is the worst night I ever spent. <laughs> it's not so good for me either, you know. Look, Ma, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Uh, Who could be calling in the middle of the night? Hey, it's only 11.30. Just seems like the middle of the night. Yeah, hello. Well, hiya, Pop. Ma? Yeah, she's right here. <laughs> Martin, I'm not here. I mean, if you try and come and get me, I won't be here. I'm being unreasonable. Listen, Martin, I'm telling you, don't come here. Don't you come here. If you insist on coming, it's freezing out, and I put your wool sweater in the second drawer. I gotta hang up now, but I'm telling you for the last time, don't come. Don't come. He's coming, isn't he? Of course. Why shouldn't he come? <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Ida. Mary, I need a hideout. A hideout? My husband is coming over, and I don't want him to find me in Rhoda's apartment. Come on in. I won't forget you for this, Mary. Oh, you're getting ready to go to bed. Uh, no, that, uh, it's okay. You go ahead, go to sleep. Just forget about me. Well, what will you do? I'll just sit here in the dark and try to figure out where it all went wrong. <laughs> That's him. Where can I hide? Who is it? It's me. That's not him. It's Rhoda. Don't let her in either. She'll squeal on me. Mary, I am so sorry about this. Ma, what are you doing? I what? want your father to be happy, and the only way he can be happy is if he's free of me. He'll never be free of you. I should know. <laughs> Ida, Ida, Rhoda. That's him. Shh. What? Shh. Pop. Pop, she's down here. She did it again. Where is she? Ida, what are you doing? I'm going to the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't lock yourself in my bathroom, Mrs. Morgenstern. Did she tell you what this ridiculousness is all about? Yeah, Pop, we both know. Rhoda, honey, I... I don't know what it is with her. She, she's so touchy lately. She's so... so hard to handle. Mr. Morgenstern, I bet I know what it is. I'll bet you Mrs. Morgenstern is just going through... The change her... of life. Right. She went through that ten years ago. <laughs> Maybe she's changing back. <laughs> I'm sitting there watching the news. And all of a sudden, your mother is telling me she knows I'm having affairs and that she understands. Uh, listen, if you'll excuse me, I have a few things I have to wash out, but I can't right now. Hey, Mary, Mary, listen. You know Ida. You're a very objective third party. Can't you reason Mr. with Morgan her? Mr. Morgenstern, I don't think I ought to. As I said to Mrs. Morgenstern Look, earlier... tell her I'm not having any affairs for her to understand or not understand. I think she heard. No, I didn't. Right. Where are you going? California. What? what? In your bathrobe? You're going to California, please. Sit down, huh? Come on. Let's let's talk about this, frankly. Talk. All right, let's talk. Good. At last. 
Mary, there are some things that are too private to discuss in front of <laughs> Don't you have some laundry to do or something? Yeah, sure, sure, I do. Ma, what are you do? Is there any way to talk to Mary? Go upstairs and use my apartment. I don't want to. Why not? It's nicer here. <laughs> Perfectly all right. I'll make good use of the time. I gotta go to the laundromat anyway. The laundromat is closed, man. Oh. Uh, come on upstairs with me. Hey, I just got one thing to say. If there's a custody battle, when they bring me into the courtroom, I refuse to run into arms of either one of you. <laughs> Ida, come on. Let's talk about this thing intelligently. Yes. Uh, my slippers. I just I forgot my slippers. <laughs> Come on, Ida, let's, let's sit down and talk. Come on, like two people. <laughs> All right, Ida, now listen. Maybe, maybe I've been neglectful in these last couple of years, but honestly, that is all it's been. Honestly? Honestly. Tell me one thing, Martin. What? If you had been fooling around, would you tell me now? No. Well, honey, I'd want to spare your feelings. That's sweet. How do I know you're not sparing my feelings now? Well, you don't. Well, are you? No. Honestly? Honestly. Oh, Martin, I'm so mixed up with all these honestlies. It would be simpler if you just told a lie. Oh, you want to hear a lie? I'm going to tell you a lie. Ida. These last 35 years have been pure agony. I don't love you more than anything else in the whole world. That's a lie? Biggest one I ever told. Oh, Martin. Oh, oh Martin. Oh, it's been a long time since we hugged. <laughs> too long. Too long. It's not too sexy anymore, is it? <laughs> Sure it is. Oh, no, Martin. What you mean is we're comfortable together, but, well, it's not so romantic for you. I mean, if you met me today, wouldn't you marry somebody a little taller? <laughs> nope. Well, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> Why not? Well, you can't get married twice. That's true. Hey. Hey, why not? Listen, there's no law against it. <laughs> Ida, come on, let's get married again. Again? Listen, they renew leases, don't they? They pick up options. Look, we've been married for 35 years, honey. It's time we... It's time we renewed our lease. Renewed our lease? Yeah. Oh, Martin, that's so poetic. <laughs> oh, please. Hello, Rhoda. Guess who? She guessed. What's new? She wants to know what's new with us. Get on down and we'll tell you. And bring Mary, too, okay? Hey, did you hear that? She was anxious to know what we were doing, and I said to her, what's new? Mm, I heard that was very cute. I... Yeah, and they think you're the one with a sense of humor. <laughs> around here. Uh, synagogue? What do you need a synagogue for? Your father proposed to me we're gonna get married again. Second ceremony, right here in Minneapolis. What do you think? Oh, Pop, oh. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not doing this because you have to. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make it. Well, she could have. But Edie and I have a deal. I don't like to see her cry at weddings, and she doesn't like to see me drink at receptions. <laughs> Mind if I have a refill? Yes, go ahead. Attention, please. Could I have everybody's attention? Uh, excuse me, Rabbi. Uh, it is now time for the newlyweds to go back to their motel for the honeymoon. Oh, <laughs> but before they go, the bride will throw the bouquet. Ah. Uh. 
Best two out of three. Ah! <laughs>